Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about the right order in which you should treat the outliers, missing values, scaling, and or multicollinearity issues in your data. It is a pivotal step which you just can't go wrong with. Because if you go wrong here, the rest of your analysis will be of no value whatsoever. For demonstration purposes, I will be mostly using very common references. But what we showing here is applicable to any tool that you use, whether you use R or Python or any other programming language or a menu based tool like SPSS or Minitab, it's going to be the same irrespective of the tool. So please watch this video till the end and ensure that you follow this in practice. We'll be uncovering a lot of interesting aspects which you otherwise might have never heard of. Before we get started, please make sure that you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon. And also please share this with all those who might benefit. Knowledge multiplies when you share it. Let's get started. Let's understand it in terms of a weighing scale. What weighs more? And we have two teams here. Let's say the first team is outliers and missing values. And the second team is scaling issues and multicollinearity. Now I'm saying that outliers and missing values should be given a higher priority. They weigh a little more compared to scaling and multicollinearity. And when I say they weigh a little more, I'm only talking about the order in which they should be treated. All of these are concerns which have to be addressed before we are able to move with relevant analysis. But what is the right order? So in terms of order, we're saying outliers and missing values should be given precedence over scaling and multicollinearity issues. And we'll see why. Let's quickly refresh. What are outliers? So we saw a data in the last video where we discussed these columns may have certain unusually high or low values, which are called outliers. We also learned how to visualize these outliers using box plots. We can see that outliers are the values which are way too different from the rest of the values. It can be on the higher end or on the lower end, but they are different. In the presence of an outlier, therefore, a mean is meaningless because an outlier will always try to draw the mean towards itself. So when you add all the values in mean as you apply the formula, you will end up giving a very high weight to the outlier. And that's why the mean that you will calculate will not be a fair representation of the rest of the data. But what is it with missing values? So when you have missing values in the data, how do we calculate mean? Let's take a small sample, only five values, and let's try to calculate the mean for this. What will be the mean? Well, actually you can't calculate the mean because you have a missing value. We are calling it NAN, which is not a number, or it can be just an NA or just a blank cell. It is not a value that's present. So you can't proceed with mean calculation in the absence of the values that are to be accounted for. You can calculate the mean excluding the value which is missing, but then you are discarding your record, which is not advisable. So an important takeaway in the presence of outliers, mean shouldn't be calculated. You can calculate mean, it's feasible, but you should not calculate mean because it is inflated or deflated due to the presence of outliers. In the presence of missing values, mean can't be calculated because till the time I don't treat my data for missing values, mean will not populate. Let's further refresh the formula for mean and standard deviation. So we know mean is a clear problem in the presence of outliers and missing values. Why is standard deviation a problem? simply because standard deviation uses mean in its formula. With this background, let's understand how do we go about scaling our data. So there are two types of popular treatments when it comes to scaling. First is a z-score treatment. You take the value, from each value subtract the column mean and divide it by the standard deviation. And the other is min-max scaling, where you take a value and from the value subtract the minimum value of the column and divide it by the range of the column. That is the maximum value and the minimum value. Let's just see how this works. So we are looking at a data. Let's say there is a column called age and these are the values that are present with us. We've already calculated the mean standard deviation, minimum and the maximum value can be calculated straight away using very simple Excel formula. How do we calculate the scaled age value as per the Z score method? It's simple just have to take the value minus the average and you can fix it 
divided by the standard deviation. And again, fix the standard deviation so that you don't have to apply it every time. This is the scaled value. You can simply drag this for the rest of the sales. And this is your Z scaled age. You might be wondering, this looks negative and positive at times. Yes, that is the case, but this is fitting onto a standard normal distribution. So this will always be range bound. And these positives and negatives are to be seen in relative terms. What is the min max scaling? You must have got an idea that we have to take the value minus the minimum value divided by the range, which is the maximum value minus the minimum value. So this is your min max scaled value. Again, you can drag it. Now this value, the first column will always range between negative three to positive three, because that's how your normal distribution is typically. And this value, this column will always vary between zero and one. In these cases, you can see why it would become zero because the value minus the minimum value, there was a tie and that's why the value became zero. And why it is one here? Because when you take the maximum value, subtract the minimum value from it, that's the same as the range, which is your denominator. So this will always be between zero and one. This is how you go about scaling your data. If you're doing this in Python, it's very straightforward. You have a standard scaler and min max scaler available under scikit-learn. You can directly call them and scale your entire data. While this is simple to understand, let's see what is the problem. So why can't we do scaling before outlier treatment? So just some time back, we discussed why mean and standard deviation are not reliable when you have outliers or missing values in the data. And here we see scaling actually uses mean and standard deviation. And that's why it is not a good idea to proceed with Z score transformation when you have outliers or missing values in your data. But what about min max scaling? Why is this a problem? Recollect your box plots. What will be the minimum and maximum values in this case? Of course, the outlier values. And that's why it is not a good idea to do any kind of scaling. Even the min max scaling would be a problem when you have outliers present in your data. But what about the multicollinearity? Multicollinearity works as per the Pearson's correlation coefficient R. This is a slightly complex formula, so you don't have to memorize this, but you can see this clearly that this formula repeatedly uses means and standard deviations. So now once again, if you have outliers and missing values present in the data, you cannot compute multicollinearity in a reliable way. In the presence of outlier, it will not be the right calculation. In the presence of missing values, it simply can't be calculated. So at this stage, we are clear that scaling in multicollinearity is to be given a secondary importance when it comes to treatment. But between these two, which should be given precedence? Let's understand that. Let me show you a data which we discussed in the last video. Here, we are talking about the age of the participants and the number of steps walked by each of them on an average. And we could transform this data from age in years to age in months and steps to per hundred. Age in months looks very different from the age in years because we've multiplied every value by 12. And we've divided every single value in the steps column by hundred to bring it to per hundred steps. However, the interesting fact is the correlation between these two variables for both the tables will be identical. Let me show you. All right, so we are here, the same values on an Excel sheet, and I'm applying the correlation function. First, I will take the first column, and then I will take the second column, and I get a correlation value like this. If I just copy paste the same formula here, you can see now this is referring to the column I and column J, but the values are exactly identical. So once again, it emphasizes that the correlation is independent of scale. This brings us to the first half of the conclusion that we give outliers and missing values a priority, but between scaling and multicollinearity, it doesn't really make a difference. Multicollinearity will be the same irrespective of whether you have scaled or not scaled your data. So you can do this in any order. Now let's figure out what should be the right order between outliers and missing values. And in order to do this, we'll have to first understand what are the different outlier treatments and missing value treatments that we have. So the most common treatment for outliers is a replacement with median. Second is 
you may cap the outliers. So the values above Q3 plus 1.5 IQR are called outliers. You can simply freeze the values above Q3 plus 1.5 IQR to the upper limit. Same way you may floor any value which is below the Q1 minus 1.5 IQR, which is the boundary to determine outliers. You may bring it to the boundary and call it as Q1 minus 1.5 IQR. And last is use algorithms. This is the most practical and realistic way and we will definitely discuss why. The first three approaches, which are the most common approaches for outlier treatment are actually column level treatments. I'll explain in a while what exactly does it mean. But first let's look at the missing value treatments. You have an option to replace the missing value with the mean, provided the data is free from outliers. You can replace the missing value with the median. You can replace the missing value with the mode for categorical data. And you can again use algorithms. Again here, the first three approaches are the column level approaches. And the last one is a more practical approach. Let's understand how. So let's say we have a lot of data. There are several columns. We are right now for our discussion only going to concentrate on two columns. First is age and the second is experience, right? So we have these different ages and years and experience in years. And we have a missing value for experience corresponding to age 23. Let's concentrate on the column. The common approach that we will take is that we will calculate the median of the column and try to impute it with that value. Let's see how we go about it. The column experience has a missing value and we can see the median is 10. Therefore, we should replace this missing value with the median. This is what we do when we look at the column alone. So we came back and replaced the missing value with the median. Very convenient, very easy. But there is a problem. And the problem is that we are saying that a 23 year old employee has 10 years of work experience, which means the employee started working at the age of 13. The debate here would not be whether it is practically possible or not that an employee can start working at the age of 13. The problem is that in our decision making, we only considered the experience column. We didn't look at the age column at all. Had there been a way to consider the entirety of the record, which is the row, we could have come up with a better computation. Let's see how. So here's our data and let's try to find out similar records. So there is another employee who has an age 23. There is another employee who has an age 25. And maybe there's one more employee with age 22. If you see these employees look very similar to the kind of employee for which we have the experience missing. If we would have considered only these similar values to come up with an imputation, it would have been much more realistic. The median and mean both in this case, when we consider only the additional three similar employees was two. It is now realistic that a 23 year old employee has an experience of two years. Certainly a better guess compared to 10 years of experience for a 23 year old employee. While this is a very powerful technique and a more logical technique, the only limitation here is that it would not work when you have outliers present in the data because the algorithms don't really evaluate things like the human beings do. So if you have outliers present, the algorithm would try to think as if that's a common value and will try to come up with imputation, taking the outlier into account. Therefore, now we have our correct order. First, we should treat outliers, then the missing values. And after having treated outliers and missing values, we may proceed with the scaling and multicollinearity issues. This brings us to an end of this video. If you've not already subscribed, please consider doing so and hit the bell icon. Also, please share it with as many people as possible because this is something that's not commonly covered in a lot of courses and discussions.